Hi! Welcome back to my channel. In the last video, I showed you how to install Fuxa SCADA. Now, let's continue from where we left off. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to create a SCADA interface using Fuxa, utilizing Modbus devices. Let's get started with the steps. For the Modbus device, the required components are the WT32ETH01 board, which will serve as the Modbus server, and a TTL to USB adapter for uploading the code. Next, I'll need a DHT11 sensor to obtain temperature and humidity values, which will be stored in holding registers. Additionally, I'll require a two-channel relay that will be activated based on the coil status in Modbus. Other components include a micro USB adapter for powering up the board, an Ethernet cable for communication, and jumper cables for wiring connections. Here's the code in the Arduino IDE. I'm utilizing the Arduino Modbus library to transform this board into a Modbus TCP server, and the web server WT32ETH01 library for Ethernet connections on the WT32 board. Make sure to adjust the IP address according to your network configuration. Also, take note of the pin numbers used as outputs for the DHT11 sensor, and the PO pins used to control the relay. In this setup, I'm utilizing two coil registers to control relays and four holding registers to store temperature and humidity values. To store temperature and humidity values, I'm utilizing two registers, one to store the integer value and the other to store the decimal value. To learn how to upload code to the WT32ETH01 board, please watch my previous video. After uploading the code and powering up the board, connect it to the network using an Ethernet cable. Let's check if the Modbus server is connected to the network by using the ping command in the command prompt. We can see that the Modbus server has successfully connected to the network. Now, let's run Fuxa by typing the command Fuxa and the command prompt. Access the Fuxa interface using a browser with its default port, which is 1881. In Fuxa, there are three interfaces, Home, Lab, and Editor. Let's begin by accessing the Editor page. Click on the Setup icon, then in the Setup pop-up, select Connections. We'll add a Modbus TCP device, fill out the form according to the device connection details, and make sure to adjust the IP address accordingly. After adding the Modbus device, click the link button. Next, add the tags corresponding to the coil registers and the holding registers. For the coil registers, which consist of two relay addresses, name them relay number 1 and relay number 2. Next, for the holding registers, we have four addresses in use. Two addresses are used for temperature values, one for the integer part and one for the decimal part. Since the Modbus server is only 16-bit, each address can only store an integer value. Similarly, for humidity values, we also have two addresses, one for the integer part and one for the decimal part. Ok, in the device settings for the Modbus TCP server, we've created tags for the addresses from which we'll retrieve values. We can now view the real-time values for each address in this table. Next, I'll create a tag in the Fuxa server to store the combined integer and decimal values for temperature and humidity. To merge these values, I'll use a script. Ok. All the tags we'll use have been created and are well connected, so the values in each tag are ready to be displayed in the visuals and controls as we desire. Now, let's try using a button control to manipulate the relay by changing the value in the coil register. Name this button relay number 1, and in the events tab, select click as the type and set value as the action. For tag selection, choose the relay 1 tag, then click OK to finish setup.
Perform the same steps for relay number 2. Name this button relay number 2, and in the events tab, select click as the type and set value as the action. For tag selection, choose the relay 2 tag, then click OK. After finishing, click the play button to test the SCADA in the lab interface. Click the buttons to control the relays, and observe whether the relays on the board actually turn on or off according to the button controls. Next, let's try using LED gauge visuals to display the status of relay number 1 and relay number 2. Select the relay 1 tag in the LED gauge settings. Then, in the property tab, set the min to 1 and max to 1. This means if the tag value is 1 or true. Next, choose the desired fill and stroke colors if the tag status is true. Add a condition for when the tag status is false or zero. Set min and max to zero in this case. Then, choose the fill and stroke colors if the tag status is false or zero. Click OK, and let's test it out. We can see that when the Relay 1 button is pressed to turn on Relay 1, the LED gauge changes its color according to the relay status. Next, let's try the pipe animation. Click on the pipe tool and draw a line representing the desired pipe flow. Then, in the pipe settings, choose the desired properties such as border size, pipe width, content width, content dash, and its color. Next, in the Action tab, bind the tag to Relay 1. Set Min and Max to 1, meaning for a value of 1 or true in Relay. Choose Turn Clockwise as the type. Add a condition for when the Relay 1 status is 0 or false. Set Min and Max to 0 and choose Stop as the type. Once done, test if the visual works when the Relay is on and stops when the Relay is off. Next, we'll use Scripps feature. Because in the Modbus server register, the temperature and humidity data, both the integer and decimal values, are separated into different registers. So, to obtain the complete temperature and humidity values, we need to combine these two values. I'll use a script in Fuxa for this purpose, and then I'll store the values in tags on the Fuxa server. Writing code in the script is quite straightforward since it uses JavaScript. In this script, I retrieve value A from the tag representing the integer part of the temperature, and B represents the decimal part. Then, I combine them into value C. Next, I'll set the temperature tag on the server with the value of C. We can test the script we've created by clicking on the test tab on the right side, then clicking run test. If there are no errors, the values we've displayed using the console. Log syntax in the script will appear. Click on Edit Script Name to change the script's name. In this example, I'll change the name to Temperature. Next, create a script for the humidity value using the same steps. To ensure that the temperature and humidity values are always updated, we need to run the scripts we created earlier using script scheduling. Set the type to loop with interval and the interval to 1 second. Click OK, and the script will run every 1 second. Next, let's try using a circular gauge to display the temperature value. In the circular gauge settings, select the temperature tag in Fuxa server. This is the value generated by the script. Then, set the max value to 50 and click OK. After that, let's test to see if the gauge visual is displaying as expected and if the values are being shown correctly. Copy the gauge and then set it up for the humidity value. In this video, we've demonstrated how to create a SCADA interface using Fuxa, utilizing Modbus devices. The Modbus device we've used is the WT32 ETH01 board, connected to both the DHT11 sensor and relays. 
We've set up Modbus connections, created tags for relay number 1 DAN relay number 2, temperature, and humidity values, and used scripts to combine integer and decimal values. We can control the relay using buttons, additionally, we visualize these values using LED gauges, pipe animation, and circular gauges. Stay tuned for part 2, where we'll explore chart usage, output values, animations, and alarms. Don't forget to subscribe to avoid missing out on the next video. See you in the next video.